Nicole Omega. My friends call me Coley, and I am the mom and sha man from beautiful Four Oaks, North Carolina. And I'm going to read some stories to you today from My Father's Dragon. This is by Ruth Styles Gannett, illustrated by Ruth Chrisman Gannett. We will start with, let's see, My Father Meets the Cat. <clears throat> so this is chapter one. See, here's the picture. Here's the word to if you want to pause and look at it, but I'll read them to you. All right. All right, cool. Settle down. All right. My father meets the cat. One cold rainy day when my father was a little boy, he met an old alley cat in his on his street. The cat was very drippy and uncomfortable, so my father said, "Wouldn't you like to come home with me?" This surprised the cat. She had never before met anyone who cared about old alley cats. But she said, I'd be very much obliged if I could sit by a warm furnace and perhaps have a saucer of milk. We have a very nice furnace to sit by, said my father. And I'm sure my mother has an extra saucer of milk. My father and the cat became good friends. But my father's mother was very upset about the cat. She hated cats, particularly ugly old alley cats. Elmer Elevator, she said to my father, if you think I'm going to give that cat a saucer of milk, you're very wrong. Once you start and feed and stray out a cat, you might as well expect to feed every stray in town. And I'm not going to do it. This made my father very sad. And he apologized to the cat because his mother had been so rude. He told the cat to stay away and that somehow he would bring her a saucer of milk each day. My father fed the cat for three weeks, but one day his mother found the cat's saucer in the cellar and she was extremely angry. She whipped my father and threw the cat out the door. But later on, my father sneaked out and found the cat. Together, they went for a walk in the park and tried to think of nice things to talk about. My father said, when I grow up, I'm going to have an airplane. Wouldn't it be wonderful to fly just anywhere you might think of? Would you like to fly very, very much? asked the cat. I certainly would. I'd do anything if I could fly. Well, said the cat, if you'd really like to fly that much, I think I know a sort of a way you might get to fly while you're still a little boy. You, you mean you know where I could get an airplane? Well, not exactly an airplane, but something even better. As you can see, I'm an old cat now, but my young, but in my younger days, I was quite a traveler. the page is turning. My traveling days are over, but last spring I took just one more trip and sailed to the island of Tangerina, stopping at the port of Cranberry. Well, it just so happened that I missed the boat, and while waiting for the next, I thought I'd look around a bit. I was particularly interested in a place called Wild Island, which we had passed on our way to Tangeria. Wild Island and Tangeria were just together by a long string of rocks, but people never go to Wild Island because it's mostly jungle and inhabited by very wild animals. So I decided to go across the rocks and explore it for myself. It certainly is an interesting place. 
but I saw something there that made me want to weep. So that was the end of chapter one, Father Meets a Cat, and here's Wild Island. I'll go ahead and read chapter two in the same one so I can have a good ten minutes or time. Chapter two. My father runs away. Wild Island is particularly cut in two by a very wide and muddy river, continued the cat. This river begins near one end of the island and flows into the ocean on the other. Now, the animals there are very lazy and they used to hate having to go all the way around the beginning of this river to get to the other side of the island. It made visiting inconvenient and mail delivery slow, particularly during the Christmas rush. Crocodiles could have carried passengers and mail across the river, but crocodiles are very moody and not the least bit dependable and are always looking for something to eat. They don't care if the animals have to walk around the river, so that's just what the animals did for many years. But what does all this have to do with airplanes, asked my father, who thought the cat was taking an awfully long time to explain. Be patient, Elmer, said the cat, and she went on with the story. One day, about four months before I arrived on Wild Island, a baby dragon fell from a low-flying cloud into the bank of the river. He was, so he was too young to fly very well. And besides, he had bruised one wing quite badly, so he couldn't get back to his cloud. The animals found him soon afterwards, and everybody said, Why, this is just exactly what I've needed all these years. They tied a big rope around his neck and waited for the wing to get well. This was going to end all their cross-the-river troubles. I've never seen a dragon, said my father. Did you see him? How big is he? Oh, yes, indeed. I saw the dragon. In fact, we became great friends, said the cat. I used to hide in the bushes and talk to him when nobody was around. He's not a very big dragon, but the size of a large black bear, although I imagine he's grown quite a bit since I left. He's got a long tail and yellow and blue stripes. His horn and eyes and the bottom of his feet are bright red and he has gold-colored wings. Oh, how wonderful, said my father. What did the animals do with him when his wing got well? They started training him to carry passengers, and even though he is just a baby dragon, they work him all day and all night, too, sometimes. They make him carry loads that are much too heavy, and if he complains, they twist his wings and beat him. He's always tied to a stake on a rope just long enough to go across the river. His only friends are the crocodiles who say hello to him once a week if they don't forget. Really, he's the most miserable animal I've come across. When I left, I promised I'd try to help him some day, although I couldn't see how. The rope around his neck is about the biggest, toughest rope you can imagine with so many knots. It would take days to untie them all. Anyway, when you were talking about the airplanes, you gave me a good idea. Now I'm quite sure that if you were able to rescue the dragon, which wouldn't be the least bit easy, he'd let you ride him almost anywhere, provided you were nice to him, of course. How about trying it? Oh, I'd love to, said my father, and he was so angry at his mother for being rude to the cat that he didn't feel the least bit sad about running away from home for a while. That very afternoon, my father and the cat went down to the docks to see about ships going to the island of Tangaria. They found out that a ship would be sailing the next week, so right away they started planning for the rescue of the dragon. The cat was a great help in suggesting things for my father to take with him, and she told him everything she knew about Wild Island. Of course, she was too old to go along. 
everything had to be kept very secret. So when they found or brought anything to take on the trip, they hid it behind a rock in the park. The night before my father sailed, he borrowed his father's knapsack and he and the cat packed everything very carefully. He took chewing gum, two dozen pink lollipops, a package of rubber bands, black rubber bands, a compass, a toothbrush, and a tube of toothpaste, six magnifying glasses, a very sharp jackknife, a comb, and a hairbrush, seven hair ribbons of different colors, an empty grain bag with a label saying cranberry, some clean clothes, and enough food to last my father while he was on the ship. He couldn't live on mice, so he took 25 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and six apples because that's all the apples he could find in the pantry. When everything was packed, my father and the cat went down to the docks to the ship. A night watchman was on duty, so while the cat made loud queer noises to distract his attention, my father ran over the gangplank onto the ship. He went down into the hold, and hiding among some bags of wheat, the ship sailed clearly sailed early the next morning. And then that's him on the ship. All right, so that has been my father's dragon, chapter one and chapter two. So I guess you just have to tune in next time for chapters 3 and 4. So this has been Koli the Mom and Shah Man. Storytime, My Father's Dragon, chapters 1 and 2. Thank you for watching. I love you. You are so amazing. And I appreciate you sitting still. And I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>